Okay, so next we have Isabel Rivera Collazo, who is the new director of the Scripps Center for Marine Archaeology and associate professor at the University of California, San Diego, and the person who taught me everything I know about archaeology. Thank you for being here, Isabel. Oh my God, that is so pretty. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Let me let my hair go so I look different in the screen. Um, okay. Awesome. Um, well, hi everyone, and thank you so much for um, for having me. Um, as Natalie said, my name is Isabel Rivera Collazo, and I am the new director of the Scripps Center for Marine Archaeology. I'm, I am faculty at both the Department of Anthropology and the Geosciences Research Division of Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Um, I would like to start first by acknowledging that I am reaching out to you from San Diego, which is the traditional territory of uh, the Kumeyaay uh, peoples. My, I personally am Boricua from the island of Boriquen, which is the largest island of the archipelago of Puerto Rico. Um, and my work is based on my island, with my communities, with my own people. Um, and that is traditionally the territory of the people that today um, call ourselves Boricua, Taino, and, and other names. Um, so I will be sharing with you today the um, information about our project DUNAS, um, which is a community engaged work uh, for co-production of knowledge uh, for the protection of coastal cultural heritage. Before I continue, um, I want to emphasize that this project is not just me, nor it is just mine. It belongs to the DUNAS team uh, who have shaped it into what it is today. I cannot mention everyone that is part of the project, but I want to highlight the awesome work of Maria Eugenia, Don Jorge, Maricelis, uh, so many others, as well as the brilliant leadership of UC San Diego's Boricua PhD candidate, Mariela de Clet Perez, who you can see here in these figures, that's Mariela, and here in the center is also Mariela. Um, the, um, the team of Para la Naturaleza, which is Puerto Rico's, uh, one of Puerto Rico's um, NGOs for uh, environmental conservation, are also central to this work. And I want to highlight that, in fact, you'll see that Natalie's work was also a huge part of the process that created the seeds to create what Duna sees today. Um, we are used to permanency in archaeology. Uh, these images here, which we are all familiar with, show us that constant image of a familiar place or a familiar object. It evokes memories, feelings, a specific set of knowledges and maybe prejudice um, that have been part of our modern world since at least the 17th century. Even earlier than that, there are images of these, uh, the, the, the Giza archaeological uh, remains that are even earlier than the 17th century. There's a drawing from the 13th century or even earlier. Um, and it is part of also the narrative uh, in the Western world. There are many images and accounts that tell about it. It is part of the things that we assume are there and will always be there. However, climate change is rapidly, rapidly teaching us how wrong we are in assuming that heritage sites like that uh, will always be there. there um, they are showing, the, the drivers, of climate change are showing us the impermanence of archaeology. Drivers such as coastal erosion, humidity variations, changes in precipita precipitation, temperature, etc. Um, they are all, including also migration, organism migration and human migration, all pose severe risks to the longevity and permanence of those sites that are so familiar with us and uh, which we often take for granted. Sometimes we feel that these things happen far away, like this photo of a Neolithic site in Scotland. However, sometimes the impacts of climate change strike home, uh, focusing on coastal erosion and increased storminess. There are vast numbers of uh, culturally valuable heritage sites that are under direct threat by the impacts of sudden and slow coastal change. The speed and magnitude of this change make it impossible for archaeologists to intervene and protect all that is being lost. 
this is this um, this is a fact that has slowly shaped what um, our Dunas project is today. As you well know, um, in 2017, uh, Hurricane Maria struck Puerto Rico uh, shortly after another hurricane, Hurricane Irma, um, and Maria struck as a very powerful Category Five hurricane. The storm brought incredibly high storm surge, which registered in the Caricu buoy um, between seven to eight meter high uh, storm surge. Uh, and that measurement was before it failed and the, and the buoy went offline. This photo at the top, the top right image, um, is, the one of, is the oldest archaeological site of Puerto Rico, a site of Angostura, fully submerged under flood water. The storm surge also impacted shallow coastal bathymetry, including coral reefs, um, and in some cases, completely devastating them. By impacting the coral reefs in this way and changing the bathymetry, um, these characteristics left the coasts unprotected from, the from any possibility of mitigating the full energy of the waves to reach the shoreline. This was exactly what happened a few months later in March 2018, when a winter storm locally known as La Marejada, um, in the US is known as uh, the winter storm Riley, um, it caused even worse damages to the coast with storm surge comparable to Hurricane Maria registering waves between nine and eight meters high. That is almost 30 feet in wave height. These storms devastated not only the local communities that were um, so that suffered unimaginable trauma, but also transformed our island landscapes, including damages to coastal defenses against storms, such as sand dune ridges and coastal ecosystems, which we actually heard in the previous presentation how important these sand dune ridges are. But in this case, um, the storm the storm surge together with higher sea levels uh, breached these coastal defenses. In Boriquen, our ancestors have lived close to coastlines for centuries and millennia. Our people are a maritime culture. Um, they, in the past, they use, as still today, uh, we use the coastal resources and develop strong and have developed strong and resilient long and short distance social networks that use the sea and the ocean as a highway. Therefore, as the coasts recede, not only um, the sand, not, so, not only the sand dune forest and the endangered wetland species are impacted, but also the archaeological remains of our past is impacted as well. For example, my team just took this photo in November 2017, just a few weeks after Hurricane Maria. And it was just this year that I realized that not only it shows the landscape, but it also shows the looting that is impacting the area as the um, archaeological sites are being exposed. In this case, uh, this was a looter um, recovering material from the site of Puerto Las Vacas in Barceloneta. I have been working on this area in Puerto Rico since the 1990s. Actually, the first school that I led in 2015 uh, with the University of Puerto Rico was here. The sites that I assumed were safe were or are obviously not safe. And the problem continues today. These changes triggered with Hurricane Maria have not stopped because the hurricane is over. For example, this is a photo of my students next to Mount A uh, of the Playa Machuca site during our field work in 2015. And you can see that red shirt, that is uh, me, uh, the, your great baby, Natalie de la, to Natalie de la Torre Salas. <laughs> yeah. You can see on the right, this is a view towards the um, east, and this is same day towards the west. This is the same locations in February 2021, and it is even worse today. Um, the coastline is changing every day, exposing ancient Pleistocene soils, which is that red loam that you see, um, as the coast migrates south in response to rising sea levels and increased storminess. Our archaeological sites are washing out to sea. In response, I teamed up with Para la Naturaleza, the conservation NGO that I've been working with for many years, the Climate Science Alliance, and our community of residents 
Um, and with funding from the Wildlife Conservation Society, we developed DUNAS, Descendants United for Nature, Adaptation, and Sustainability. It also works in Spanish, Descendientes Unidos por la Naturaleza, la Adaptación y la Sustentabilidad. We created DUNAS with three goals, to restore natural ecosystems, to protect um, cultural heritage, and to support resilient communities. Until 2017, the narratives of climate change made little sense for our context in Puerto Rico. When people explained the urgency of action showing polar bears hanging on chunks of ice, made the problem feel distant and not relevant to us. However, this project ties together our identity our, um, to the identification of change on the land and opens the door to see the urgency um, and is to inspire climate action. This is the logic in our project. We cannot build on top of the sand dunes because that would lead to deforestation of the top of the sand dune, therefore exposing it to erosion and then the sun will just blow out from your feet. So people build their houses behind the sand dunes. As the coastlines are dynamic, so as they change and migrate, those sand dunes move seaward or landward and the people move uh, according in response to these changes. What, happened, what is happening today is that our ways of, of living are not allowing that sand dune to migrate for different reasons. And sea level is rising faster than the sand dunes can respond and that we are responding. Therefore, we are using this information to create locally, to, to provide or identify locally relevant and tangible evidence of climate change and to stimulate locally relevant activism. DUNAS is based on several activities, all um, centered around the ties to the land and climate action. Together with our community leaders and other experts, we apply the protocol for uh, sand dune restoration, where we place planks where the sand dune was, was bridged to stimulate sand accumulation, just you know, replicating the structure of, um, of natural vegetation and therefore stimulating faster uh, recovery. We combine this with art by painting messages on the planks and letting the planks communicate further with the visiting public, even if we're not there. We, and by this I mean mostly them, the, the rest of the team, um, have also developed several protocols to monitor vegetation, to, to, to establish vegetation and monitor um, revegetation to using only native plants and the natural sequence of um, revegetation to uh, stimulate dune growth, to monitor wave action, to monitor wind strength, uh, beach shape, and effects of new storms. These protocols are conducted regularly and all the data is digitized and stored in an accessible database. We also conducted an archeological excavation to investigate how people in this same location where our Dunas team lives now, um, used to live in the past using the same ecosystems. While COVID delayed our work, we are making solid progress in the analysis of the data and have been constantly communicating the results. The goal of this research is to return ownership of the past to the local communities. One of the ways in which we are registering everything and making it all accessible is by using 3D technology. For example, we scanned uh, the, uh, the entire excavation was digitized. And um, we also scanned some of the artifacts that, have, that were recovered during excavation and uploaded the, the, the uh, 3D files to our Dunas webpage. And I will share the, the link with you guys in a moment uh, so that anyone can 3D print them and have um, these uh, pre-productions of ancient artifacts. We also uh, printed several of these of copies of these artifacts, which the Dunas team uh, uses today in their interpretative tours of the area. This tour uses a um, kit of materials, as you can see here, of tools designed by the Climate Science Alliance for the specific activities um, done on the field. Uh, the tour is done using mountain bikes to avoid, uh, to, re to mitigate uh, pollution in the area. We talk about uh, coastal biodiversity, we talk about archaeology, and we talk about climate impacts and uh, climate action. We also have a digital version of this um, uh, virtual version of the tour and can be seen in the climatesciencealliance.org slash dunas ecosystem at the bottom of that page. 
This project is not a community or public archaeology project. This is what I call a communal archaeology project. It is based on dismantling and questioning hierarchical relationships in projects and building horizontal structures where we respect the voice and knowledge of the participants as equal to that of the scientists. My job is to get the money and help them problem solve with training, but they are the experts on their land. Um, this has allowed our team to move from project volunteers to co-producers of knowledge through citizen science. Um, this project will not stop climate change or sea level rise, but it is inspiring us to engage in climate action and to define locally and culturally relevant mitigation and adaptation strategies. Today, we, are, we just obtained funding to work with another climate action NGO, El Puente ELAC, to install a solar oasis within the Esperanza community in response to their request to, for powers of sufficiency during emergency situations. Um, and we are also including some other um, aspects and hopefully we'll get, uh, we just applied for additional funds to expand our project for the next three years. Um, I'm out of time, so thank you very much.